The year is 1513. The English king, Henry VIII, has left the kingdom for France, leaving behind his wife, the Queen Regent, Catherine of Aragon, and the north of the kingdom completely undefended. The Earl of Surrey is called to defend the north, calling bannermen and loyalists to his cause. Meanwhile in Scotland, the Scottish King James IV, seeing his chance, marches south to conquer England with his newly formed army, laying claim to England, seat, crown and throne. After discovering the intentions of the Scottish monarch, the Earl of Surrey, with his compatriots and their armies alongside his, all amounting to an army size of 26,000 men, they set out to meet him. By the time they have organized armies and forces, James has already taken. Norham! Etal! And Fort Castles. And with this triumph, he has established his main stronghold on the reach of Flodden Hill. The Earl marched north, but avoided James's forces, in a strategically worrying move, especially for the Scots, flanked his forces from the east and continued moving north via Twizel Bridge. James was forced to upcamp and relinquish his stronghold, as it was now too exposed. He moved his forces further south. A large army of around 30,000 men and heavy cannons became stationary at the ridge of Brankston Hill. It was here on the steeps of the hill that Britain's future was decided. The conflict between the Scottish forces led by James and the English protectorates led by the Earl of Surrey was soon to end in bloody turmoil. Both forces had finally drawn out battle lines. The English forces, the Earl of Surrey, Thomas Howard, Edmund Howard, Constable Dacker and Stanley, had prepared for the battle a stone's throw away from the small village of Brankston, at the bottom of the hill, equipped with light cannons, whereas the Scottish men and their king, James IV, armed with heavy cannons, were stationary at the top of the hill. The battle began with the Scottish cannons firing first. Heavy metallic monsters, capable of firing cannonballs the size of heads, but to no avail. Heavy metal is hard to maneuver, if not impossible to hit. The firing is slow and takes a grievous amount of effort and van power to control. Either the shot simply hit the ground and spat dirt into the air, or the shot simply overshot the English soldiers. This favor was not returned, however, as the English returned fired. And to devastating effect, the light cannons tore through Scottish numbers in a matter of moments, in a quick return fire but cannons alone would not decide the outcome of the battle. In truth, the battle was split into four major events. The first was in the wake of the English cannons firing for the first time. Hume and Huntley of the Scottish forces attacked next, advancing down the slope of the hill armed with large, long pikes, of which had served them well in combat against other European countries. But against the English, it was a different uh, matter entirely. The ground beneath them at the base of the hill was marshy and boggy, and made the Scottish formation which depended on being tightly closed for the long pikes to take full effect, broke apart with their momentum, to which the English began their advance. The Scottish don't march any further than the marshes, as the English are armed with bill hooks, halberd weapons that are shorter than Scottish pikes, but far more effective when used against dispersed or close-up targets, to which this strategy was perfect. The pikes were cut by the bill hooks, and the Scottish forces made a surprising victory in the short term devastating Edmund Howard's forces, which was saved only when Dacus' cavalry joined the battle and defeated both Hume and Huntley. The second stage was between Montrose, Crawford and Errol on the Scottish side against the Earl's personal forces and that of Thomas Howard. Stage 3. 
The Scottish, having been reassured by their victory over the forces of Edmund Howard, the Scottish forces under King James march with the remainder of his bannermen and meet the bulk of the English in the marsh at the base of the hill. The English and the Scottish forces are stuck in stalemate until... Stage 4. The forces of Stanley, Longbowmen, armed specifically for deciding the stalemate, flank the Scottish King's forces and rain showers of arrows into the Scottish bulk, decimating the Scottish and sealing James's fate. The battle is won, with the deceased rising to numbers of thousands. The Scottish, having lost their leaders, and more importantly their king, retreated. Both sides counted their dead. In total, the English forces lost a total of approximately 1,400 men. But in contrast, the Scottish forces had lost over 10,000 men and their king. Some criticised the Scottish tactics when considering their primary position at the top of the hill, when they could have easily stayed and forced the opponents to move up the hill, rather than the Scottish moving down the hill into marshy territory. Some say it was more English valour than Scottish inexperience on the battlefield. Some people were stupid. Another problem was the armaments that each side acquired. The English were armed with billhooks, chainmail, maces, halberds, full plate armour and steel shields. The Scottish, however, were armed with long spears, a personal sword and a wooden targe that really didn't protect them anywhere higher than their shoulders. There was no question that the quality of the English infantry outmatched the Scottish by kilometres. Today the monument stands as a clear remembrance of a bloody and terrible battle in which both sides bled as an outcome. The fields about Brankston are fitted with a stream to vent rainwater and keep the lands clear and dry most of the time. But no matter the rainfall, nothing can wash away the memory of that day, September the 9th, 1513.